Well, hello. God bless you today, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. My friends, it's good to be alive and in the land of the living, and I am so excited about the things that the God of the Bible is doing. You have to admit, these are some interesting times in which we're living in. We see interesting decisions coming down from the Supreme Court. We even see men actually codifying into law that which God have called sin. But my friends, do not be shaken by any of these developments because the Bible is right. God's word is his word. And we're living, I believe, in the last days, and uh, and I'm 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 like John. I'm like John, uh, the writer of the book of Revelations. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. But until He comes, until He comes, I I'm going to serve Him with my whole heart. I know that you're going to do it, and 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 we're going to stay on fire for the God of the Bible. Now, just a little thanks. I want to give a word of thanks. I want to give a shout out of thanks. And the thanks is to the members of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and our friends. You guys are fantastic. You are amazing. And I, I want to thank you, first of all, for the way that you're working with us in our attempt to make sure that we follow the guidelines with regards to social distancing and things like that as we worship the Lord together here in the sanctuary of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We've been back in the sanctuary for at least the last four Sundays and our Thursday night services, our weeknight services, and I really appreciate the way you've worked with uh, our ushers. I appreciate the way that you've worked with those who are in positions of authority, members, when you come, you're sitting where we ask you to sit. I know sometimes uh, uh, some have to be in the overflow rooms, and, and, uh, and yet I appreciate your spirit of cooperation, because what we're doing is that we believe that it's not either or. I believe that it's both, both, and it's not either or. You have church or you don't. Uh, we can have church and be safe. I don't believe that the, that the only way that I can show that I'm being responsible and keeping my members safe is to not have church. I believe that we can be responsible and keep our members safe and still gather in God's pavilion, still worship in the house of the Lord, which is the pillar and the ground of truth. God's house. David said in the time of trouble, he would hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. So we've been hiding out in God's house and the Lord has watched over us. I want to thank you for how you are working with the, the ushers and the, the, those who are in positions of authority. We are social distancing. We're doing all that we know to do. But yes, we are worshiping in the house of the Lord. And I'll tell you something, just a little, little pun here. It seems to me that uh, COVID-19 can tell time. And it seems to me that that particular virus knows what day of the week that it is. Because uh, it seems to me that it's, it, it must be much more contagious on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock than it is any other day of the week. Because I see church people out everywhere. I see church people out uh, at the malls. I see church people out in the street. I see church people out everywhere. Uh, and many of these people still, however, will not attend church on Sunday mornings because we want, they want to stay safe. But I believe that COVID-19 is as contagious on Monday at the grocery store or at Walmart or any of the other big stores as it is on Sunday at 11 a.m., on Sunday mornings. So we're going to continue to worship the God of the Bible and we're going to remain careful and we're going to uh, put our faith and our trust in the hands of the Lord. Now, speaking of worshiping, tonight will be the first night of our iron uh, 
Factory Men's Conference forged by God's truth. I'm so excited about tonight. Uh, yours truly will be ministering the word of the Lord tonight and on tomorrow night, the president of our men's department, the older Anthony Wilson, who also serves as the second assistant here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, is going to be delivering the word of the Lord and God's going to use him in a mighty way. Iron sharpen if iron. Uh, we are living in a day where we need to sharpen. We need to encourage. We need to inspire one another. And I believe, my friends, that during this conference, we're going to do just that. The men's conference at the Upper Room is not a men's only conference. We're invi inviting our men. We're inviting our women. We're inviting uh, the whole family to come to the conference. We want to be better men. We want to be godly men, righteous men, uh, tremendous uh, heads of our household, men who know how to have a proper relationship with their wife, with their daughter, with their son, with the church, with the community. Oh my, we see what's going on in the community. And my friends, I am not of the opinion that African Americans are expendable. I believe that we have a right to live a right to live, a right to be born, a right to flourish in this country as just as much of a right as anyone else. And I believe that we can do it and we can achieve this uh, if we're told the right things and, and, and preached and told to abide by and walk in God's truth. I also believe that all other Americans, males of white, Asian, Hispanic, uh, otherwise, all people have a right to live and to enjoy, praise the Lord, the bounty that this nation has to offer. Now we're putting our trust in the hands of the God of the Bible, and he is going to keep us. Now, I I'll be honest with you. I want to just, just give you a tease of some of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. And I'll just, I'll just say this. Iron really does sharpen iron. And uh, tonight, men, we're going to be talking about it. And God's going to bless us in a mighty way. Now, listen, come on time. Come and be here in the time of prayer. And, uh, and we're going to be social distancing. We're going to be social distancing because I, too, am among the preachers who want to keep our congregants safe. We want our members to live. We want our members to survive this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We want the saints to be safe and healthy. We want the saints to, to, to live. And you know what? We're experiencing just that. But at the same time, we're gathering together uh, in the house of the Lord Covered by the blood. I believe that the blood of Jesus will do what a face mask will not do. I believe that the blood of Jesus does what uh, doctors and medicines cannot do. While at the same time, I respect the medical community. I respect the CDC. I respect uh, science. I respect uh, all of these people. But I put nothing ahead, nothing above our Christian doctrine, and our right to worship the God of the Bible. So tonight, join me right here at the Upper Room. I'm excited. I can hardly wait, and I look forward to seeing you here tonight for Men's Conference, the Iron Factory. Praise the Lord. Men forged by God's truth. And you know what? We're still going to study the Bible. God bless you. I'll see you tonight. And by the way, by the way, p p please forgive me for waiting at the end to just wish you a wonderful Jesus Pride Day. You see this at the upper room all month long. You see the flag behind me. It's Jesus Pride Month. We believe again that the rainbow should be synonymous with the God of the Bible. As a believer, I am proud of my walk with Christ. And uh, I will not take down at all. We will not stand by in silence as those who walk in a lifestyle 
that the Bible declares to be wicked, wrong, and the word that the Bible used is the word abomination. And I know there are those of you who say we shouldn't talk like that. So I guess as time go on, you're going to just take whole sections out of the Bible and just throw the, cast them aside and, and just pretend that the Bible doesn't say what the Bible says. Well, I'm not going to join you in that. I'm going to stick with God's word. When I got saved, believers said, for God, I will live. And for God, I'll die. We're not just given uh, as Christians to live the faith. We're not just called to, to just live the faith of biblical Christianity. We're, we are to live it. We are to live it. But if necessary, if necessary, we uh, also must be willing to, that got to be a hill that you're willing to die on. And this is mine. It's from Philippians chapter number one. In verse 29, it says, for unto you, for unto you, it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. We're not called to just be believers in the name of the name of Christ and ride around in big fancy cars and nice suits because uh, of our relationship with Christ. But we're also called to suffer for his sake. So I believe the whole role. I believe the whole Bible. And I'm going to preach it. Going to eat it. And I'm going to live it. See you tonight.